What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. Today we're going to be looking at understanding opposite integers. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Today I will be able to identify the opposite of an integer placed on a number line. But before we do that, we need to rewind and go back to our first lesson with negative numbers, our introduction to negative numbers, when we talked about four and negative four. And we looked at that and we came up with two things. One, they're on opposite sides of zero. And two, they're the same distance away from zero. They're both four units away from zero, just ones to the left and ones to the right. And we thought to ourselves, these look like opposite numbers, right? Because of those two things. And in fact, they are, they are considered opposite integers. In fact, our entire number line is made up of integers and their opposites, except for zero. Zero is its own opposite, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's take a look at one and negative one, right? They're both on opposite sides of zero and they're both one unit away from zero. So we would consider one and negative one to be opposite. Same thing with negative two and two. Our integer two is two units away to the right of zero. Our integer negative two is two units to the left of zero, and they're both on opposite sides of zero. So we would call these opposite integers. Same thing with negative three and three, and of course, negative four and four. And even if you did one million and negative one million, they'd both be on opposite sides of zero, and they'd both be one million units away from zero, so you could consider those opposite. This leads us to our key thought for today's lesson. Key thought number one, numbers are opposite if they meet these two requirements. They are on opposite sides of zero and they are the same distance from zero on the number line. We just looked at a couple examples of that. And number two, the negative sign can mean to do the opposite. Right? When we first introduced negative numbers, we introduced the negative sign as being directional, as telling you to move to the left of zero. Well, another meaning, and it doesn't change the original meaning, is that the negative sign can mean do the opposite. And that makes a lot of sense. If you wanted to do the opposite of positive eight, then you would do negative eight, and you'd be moving to the left of zero. So it doesn't change our original definition of the negative sign being directional, but it adds another layer to it. Our I do problem says plot these integers on the number line right here, and then plot the opposites, connect them with a line, okay? And so our first integer is 10, so it's a positive 10 because it doesn't have a negative sign. We make the inference that it's positive. And if you look down here, you can be real careful that you always look at the scale or the intervals of the number line, because here we're not counting by one, we're counting by five. So positive 10 would be 10 units to the right, and we would put that dot right here. Now the opposite of positive 10 would be negative 10, right? So the one on the opposite side of the number line and it's the same distance away from zero. So that would obviously be right here. And then we're gonna connect them with a little line because sometimes seeing it visually helps you recognize the symmetry of numbers. Now our next integer is negative 15. So we wanna do 5, 10, 5, negative 15 right here. The opposite of negative 15 would be positive 15, right? So it's really not that hard, but it's a concept a lot of people don't think about, and it's gonna be really helpful as you get deeper into negative numbers, understanding negatives and positives and the opposite. So our positive 15 is right here, and then we're going to connect those with a line. Then we have negative 30, and our opposite for negative 30 would be positive 30. Okay, so I'm gonna plot that one right there. And we're gonna connect with a line and our symmetry might not look as good the farther we get because I'm not an artiste, but I'll do my best. And then we have positive 40, which is gonna to be to the right of zero. And then the negative 40 would make it an opposite. So that's gonna be negative 40 to the left of zero. And we're gonna connect those with a line. And so the rainbow thing is just kind of show you the visual representation of them both being the same distance from zero. There's a lot of symmetry to our number line. For our we do problem, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna do it on a vertical number line. So it says plot the integers on the number line and then plot the opposites, connect them with a line. So our first one is gonna be 70. Now, if you look right here, we're, our interval is gonna be 10. So we're gonna count up because remember positive numbers are up. 
negative numbers are down, and so we're going to have 70 here. Our opposite would be negative 70, so I'm going to plot that right there, and I'm just going to connect it with a line. Okay, if you don't have your notes today, you can check in the description of the video, and you should see a link to the notes there. Now we, our next one's going to be negative 10. Our opposite's going to be positive 10, so let's just plot both of those at the same time, and that's going to be real easy right there. Our next one's going to be 50 and negative 50. So I'm going to count up for positive 50, count down for negative 50, and I'm going to connect those. Okay, there we go. A little bit harder here. And then negative 20 is our next integer, and the opposite would have to be positive 20. Again, because they're on opposite sides of 0, and they're both the same distance away from 0. Understanding this concept is really going to help you when you get to adding and subtracting across zero in our later lessons because we're going to be doing a strategy called making a zero and recognizing opposites is going to be a huge part of that. And then here we have a you try problem. So if you haven't been with us before, you try problem, you can go ahead and pause the video, try the problem, and then push play to check your understanding. If you're not ready to try it by yourself yet, you can do it with us as another we do problem and just copy them down in your notes as we do them. Hopefully you just paused it and you tried it by yourself. Let's check your mastery. So it says write the integer that represents the opposite of each situation. Well, the first thing we have to do is write down the integer for the situation. So it says 100 feet below sea level. That's gonna be a negative 100. So the opposite of negative 100 would be 100 feet above sea level, a positive 100, all right? A credit of $13, that's going to be positive 13 because we're going to be depositing money into our bank account, which is, means the opposite would be a debit of 13 or negative 13. 46 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Okay, and my key thing is below here. So I'm going to be negative 46, which means my opposite would be above zero, which would be positive 46. And then here we have a debit of, of 17, which is going to make this a withdrawal of 17, a negative 17, because I'm taking money out. And the opposite would be a credit of 17 or a positive of 17. So going back and just reviewing some of our real world situations that we're going to have to deal with negative numbers later in our lessons. As always, thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's a lot of different options on YouTube. We would love for you to like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Let us know where you're watching from. We have a lot of people watching from Canada, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Check out our Negative Numbers song and the rest of our Negative Numbers playlist. We appreciate you. Thank you again. Instructor Beats, out.